Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. He's a video producer here in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, with uh, uh, IWC, RWA, a whole bunch of other stuff at PittsburghWrestling.com, IndieWrestling.us. With me, as usual, is my compatriot, the uh, uh, ringside announcer for the uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling in, in in Texas, in the Texas area. In, in, in is, the is, Texas. He's aiming to please that Eamon Payton. How you doing? Kick him right in the Texas. Hi, Samark. How are you? I'm uh, fine. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you uh, for having me. I, I, what? Whatever. Oh, you're my co-host. I am the co-host. I don't no, know you're just the longest running guest in Indie Mayhem show history. It is. I'm just a gigantic, gigantic guest on the show. Um, no, uh, I'm excited to talk about indie wrestling for another Yes, week. yes. And of course, this is the Indie Mayhem show. You can find us at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can subscribe to this and so many other shows on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, all kinds of stuff. You can also drop me a line as I choke to death over here. Read that oh. number on the screen, Amen. Ah, you can uh, call us at 412-206-WMS0 or uh, email us uh, about upcoming indie wrestling events, things you think we should talk about, uh, questions, etc. at goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Give us feedback right. on the show. Tell us what you think. Handled expertly there, Eamon. You could join us here hey. live where uh, whenever the Wrestling Mayhem Show seems to end around about 11 p.m. Eastern Time at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. You can join us earlier at 9 p.m. when we talk about just a lot of pro wrestling. Um, so tonight we actually have a pre-recorded. I'm going to take it back in time uh, to Pedro DeLuca. I had a conversation with him this past Sunday. Uh, he's the uh, uh, announcer for... Um, AIW, Absolute Intense Wrestling, International Wrestling Cartel, and the Vicious Outcast Wrestling, uh, two in Pittsburgh, one in Cleveland, uh, as well as a few other things that we discovered during this. He is uh, aiming when we talk about people in the industry that are fans and say we should be fans. This guy is the poster child for these kinds of things. So here is my talk with him. Hey, guys, we're hitting the time warp here. I've tracked down. He's elusive. For uh, for for a ring announcer, <laughs> apparently, usually he's in the middle of the ring. The rest of the week, you have no idea. But we have on the phone Pedro De Luca. He's known at least around these parts as uh the uh, uh ring announcer for uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling, International Wrestling Cartel. Our friends there, and it's been all around. And we'll we'll get into that here a little bit. Pedro, how you doing this uh fine afternoon? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing, sir? All right, all right. Now, Patron's been around for a while. I've always had a lot of fun with him at the shows here, especially at IWC. Um, so I, I'm glad to get you on and uh, kind of get your take on uh, your angle of, of indie wrestling here. I think you're the second uh, ring announcer that we've had, technically. I mean, I, you know, Dabrowski's been in there, you know, uh, for, for a promotion or two himself. But, um, you know, good to get you on. So the first thing we... <laughs> In the first, it's really good to be here. And the first thing we get to get into, and I know I know you're you're a bit of a fan from the conversations we have. Uh, what is your first kind of memory getting into pro wrestling? What is the earliest kind of like wow wrestling? You know, look at this kind of kind of memory there. <laughs> well, um, if you can really call it professional wrestling, I guess my very first memory is watching gorgeous ladies of wrestling with my dad. If Ooh. that doesn't throw my dad under the bus too much. <laughs> so like I really didn't know like professional wrestling really existed for a while besides gorgeous ladies of wrestling. And I had a friend uh, in elementary school, his name was Eric Latchaw. He, he loved wrestling. He was always telling me about this Rock and Roll Express and all these other guys. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Did they, did they wrestle Colonel Naninchka and, and uh, Mountain Fuji? And he's like, who are they? So one day I stayed the night at his house. And uh, the next uh, morning, Saturday morning, he had on wrestling. And I see this guy with these like ripped up pants on and, with blue with purple gloves on his hand, I'm like, who's that guy? And he's like, that's Bruce the Barber Beefcake. I'm like, wow, that guy's pretty cool. So I sat there and I watched it and I'm like, wow, this is better wrestling than Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. This is really cool stuff. So it kind of evolved from watching Bruce the Barber Beefcake, which years later I had to actually get to work with Brutus Beefcake and find out what a jerk he is. <laughs> and uh, so it's kind of ironic on that. But uh, really, I guess my first real memory of professional wrestling would be Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Nice, nice. So, so, uh, what what brought you over the years to become a ring announcer? Then, 
Um, you know, it was just from watching that and seeing, like, I guess you call it the pageantry and just how electric the atmosphere was. I, I always wanted to be a professional wrestler, but as I got older and started having back problems and knee problems and everything else, I knew I could never be a part of professional wrestling until I found the indie scene. And you know, I started working uh, with JT Lightning. I'd go get uh, guys from the airport for JT Lightning in, in Cleveland and kind of evolved into, like, uh, I guess you would call it security and ring crew. I got involved with Absolute Intense Wrestling, and it just it skyrocketed from there, uh, just being involved, hanging around the ring, getting to know some of the guys. And that, that's really how I transitioned into being a ring announcer because I knew I couldn't be in the ring, mm-hmm. but I wanted to be around the ring as much as possible. Certainly. I, and AIW, and, and there's somebody that you know, I know we've, we've talked about for years on Wrestling Mayhem Show, and, uh, and, and I've had... Uh, a pretty amazing run of talent come through town there or, or come from there. Um, what was it like working with AIW? Um, the, the early days, it was, it was more of a party atmosphere. It was, it was kind of like a place to hang out. It seemed like it, it really, it, over the years, it has really evolved from just a party scene to a huge deal. Uh, if, if that makes sense to everybody. Okay. Um, I mean, when I, the first show I went to, I almost never went back because they were uh, cutting up Bibles with machetes and butcher knives. I'm like, oh, I really don't <laughs> want to be a part of this, but I, I, I continued with it. And now, I mean, like you said, there's so much talent's been through there. Ring of Honor, world champions, uh, mm-hmm. you know, guys that are now on, in WWE. I was sitting watching a pay-per-view and it's like, wow, there's three guys in a, a six-man tag team main event that I've seen years before anybody knew who they were. So. Like you said, that the talent that has come through there is just amazing, and to see what it came from way back in like 2005 ish to what it is now, it's just remarkable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't know if they really kind of. I mean, I know they they still push envelopes here and there, but like when when I saw it was back when you know our friends like Jimmy DeMarco and, and Shima Zion were around, and they were basically like fighting in in, in bars. It seemed right, uh, you know, and that, that's always been kind of the the stigma with AIW, you know, they get out of control and they they lose their buildings, but that's not really the case. You know, in the early days, yeah, that would have been, there was a lot of things. We went from Peabody's, we went to the West Park Party Center. We've been, you know, all different buildings, but it's not, they don't have the, I don't know how straight for this. The stigma that's around the early days of AIW is undeserved because, yeah, we had the blood and the gore and the hardcore stuff, but, Underneath it all, there was always a lot of really, really good talent and uh, really good professional wrestling because you had guys like, like you said, Shima Zion, you had Johnny Gargano all through the years. I mean, there's just been so much talent and good wrestling that kind of got overshadowed by the hardcore stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I, I, I agree with what you say. Like in the little bars and stuff, they had to do that to get to where they are now. It was all part of the growing pains and growing stages to get to the level they're at now. And mm-hmm. that could be set up any promotion anywhere, even WWE. Sounds like, like, um, um, early ECW, like they were known for the, the, the blood and the guts and, and the crazy chair shots, but like, we still had like our Chris Jericho's and Eddie Guerrero's coming through there. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So how did you get tied up with the Pittsburgh scene? Um, it's actually through AIW because at the time, uh, Chuck Roberts was the ring and the main ring announcer. This has been when I was on like the ring crew and the quote unquote security team. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just so happened, um, the, the infamous AIW split happened and Chuck Roberts went with one side and I kind of stayed with the other side. And, um, it ended up that I became the main ring announcer for AIW. And when, uh, Chuck Roberts took over ownership of IWC, he knew he needed a good ring announcer and Jimmy DeMarco and Shima Zion and a couple other guys went to bat for me and Chuck Roberts had known me for over the years. I said, hey, yeah, let's bring this guy in, and that, that's how the magic happened. Nice, nice. Um, I gotta ask this: we we do this every show, and I, I'm trying to bring, I'm, I was trying to make it happen at VOW a, a few weeks ago. Tell me the origin of Cache. Cache actually comes from um, the Mike and Mike show on ESPN. Nice. Uh, they always do this thing. Uh, they're from March Madness, actually. Uh, they're bracketology, and there's always been this soundbite of uh, Mike Golick saying, I'm in it to win the cash. And that has always stuck with me. And Joe Dombrowski loves it when I say cash. Mm-hmm. So 
from working with Joe in uh, PWO slash Prime, it just kind of carried over to IWC, I, and everywhere I go now, people know me as the Cache guy. So, and of course, those, those that haven't seen uh, Joe at one of these shows, like usually, you know, Pedro's in the ring, and there's usually a raffle, right? And you say you're going to win the Cache, right? And right. you just hear a giant yelling of Cache from Joe Dombrowski, and if I'm around, I do it too. Um, I, and- it's literally the highlight of Joe's weekend of wrestling. Oh, it is. Oh, oh, he certainly. Gets cash. He gets. You know how mad he is when you don't say it. <laughs> I, I have been scolded repeatedly because I don't say cash. Right, so, right. There, I, uh, there are times I just say cash, hoping that he will hear it in like three states over, and he'll he'll yay cash because we have this psychic link together. <laughs> hey, I pointed out when you didn't say it at VOW. I was I was looking for. I know. And then I, I, I'm at intermission. Didn't even know you were in the crowd. I come up and why didn't you say case? I'm like, whoa, whoa! <laughs> you didn't know you're here, bro. Sorry. <laughs> I just thought he does it everywhere. Um, awesome, awesome. So you've been in the middle of it uh, for a bit. I, I've seen you in some really interesting situations just as a ring announcer. Um, <laughs> yes, <unfortunately. laughs> yeah, well, sometimes very unfortunately. Um, what, what are the most uh, in- interesting moments you've had in the ring there? I mean, you're only ideally you're only there at the beginning, and you get the heck out of town, right? Um, but uh, I try, I try very hard, but. Uh, it- Honestly, I think sometimes people want to see how ridiculous they can make me look during introductions. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. I know Dan Hooven has been sitting around a very awesome picture of me wearing uh, a captain's hat, two pairs of sunglasses, and a fur coat, but yet I'm with Dave Chappelle, and we're all pimps in it. So that, that that's floating around the Internet somewhere. Thanks oh, to, thank uh, you. Thank you, Mountain Dan Lions Hooven. from uh, Clearfield last weekend. Um. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's the craziest yeah, yeah, thing you've been involved in uh, in, in the ring? Um, wow, the craziest. There, there's been so many. I've ha- literally had the taste slapped out of my mouth by Mia Yim. I've um, wow been pile driven by Sheikh Abdul Hassan, which was the scariest thing ever. Well, that, no, I take that back. The scariest thing ever. Um, I probably can't say on your show because it will offend people, but. Let's just say it happened with New Jack in the ghettos of Cincinnati. And anybody that's ever heard this story knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> I think you say enough there. <laughs> and, and, and if you haven't heard the story, remind me and I will tell you off the air because it, it is quite hilarious and quite scary when you hear it. So Let, let's go with that. New Jack in the, uh, the ghetto of Cincinnati was probably the most interesting thing I've been, ever been a, a part of. Oh, wow. New, New Jack anywhere. I uh... I got to see what I think was his retirement match, and he broke into a speech and then a rap song at Pro oh, Wrestling wow. Syndicate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, apparently, he was getting into acting because he just showed up on The Daily Show. Oh, well, you know, um, if you watch Beyond the Mat, he has leading man good looks. I just had this conversation with someone the other day. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. New Jack is a very, very scary and yet interesting man, period. Certainly, certainly. Um, all right, let's get <laughs> moving on. Um, so, uh, you know, other than that, where else do you, you? I mean, you don't just work uh, like VOW, IWC, IIW. You've been around a bit, right? Um, there was a time I worked for seventeen different promotions oh, throughout geez. Ohio and Pennsylvania. Wow! But uh, I began, yeah, exactly. Uh, there was a, uh, I believe it was either two thousand eight or two thousand nine. Uh, it was a, I know it was July because it was the middle of summer. It was hot as blazes. And I kept having to get my uh, tux dry clean because the sweat stains kept coming through it. But mm. I did 22 shows in the month of July in like 2008, 2009. It was craziness. It was unbelievable how many shows I did that month. And I, I started having problems with my throat. Um, I went to the doctor and I said I have acute laryngitis, so I had to cut way back. So... Cutting back, meant I went from 17 down to like 7 or 8. But uh, the main ones are still Absolute Intense Wrestling in Cleveland, uh, IWC, of course, in uh, Elizabeth, Pittsburgh area, uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling, as you said. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also do uh, Remix Pro Wrestling in Marietta, Ohio. Um, one of my absolute favorite shows to do is Old Timey Wrestling oh, for uh, Marion Fontaine. Which if you have never seen one of these Old Timey shows, I beg you to find it and watch it because it is something that you will never expect or never see again done because the whole gimmick of the show is is being done in like the 1920s, 1940s. So 
please, please, please find old timey wrestling, and you will. I guarantee you, you will enjoy it. And it, it is I, I, different. I haven't seen a full show, but I've seen clips. I've seen pictures, and they have exactly like Marion Fontaine. Like he kind of is the creepy mustache guy, so he gets to play up that look. Jock Sampson's part of it, who's like kind of an old school throwback wrestler to begin with. Um, very big on the hip toss. Uh, for instance, Matt Cross is a part of that too, and doesn't he have like a really crazy? Uh, I mean, he, didn't he like throw on a do something crazy with a mustache? Like, every, like any chance for a cre- like this is like if you're watching NXT and there's the VOD villains, imagine an entire show of that. Right, exactly. It, 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 the, the, the greatest thing is like even the for the ring entrances, he brought in a a real old timey piano band. I call it piani, not piano, piani band. Because it's like the kind of music you would hear in a, like an old timey saloon with the, the dun, 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 music. <laughs> and it's just amazing. It's got like the entire brass section. Um, the co- if you I, you got to find the DVDs because the DVDs are amazing because simply for the commentary because even the commentary is being done in the twenties and forties because all of the references are like you know Lindy just flew across the ocean today and. Uh, when somebody does like some kind of interview, I mean the the commentary on this is expertly done. It, that is worth paying whatever he's charging for the, the DVD is just mm-hmm. to hear the commentary on it because it's hilarious and to learn something. And I'm pretty sure it is it is uh it is available on SmartMark as well. So if you, if anybody you know is familiar with that, it's a pretty big spot uh, for you guys picking up your wrestling DVDs. Um, definitely buy that. So, I mean, I, and, and and I've talked about this on the Wrestling Mayhem show uh, about uh, I I got to visit. Uh, uh, Zach Allen when we did that DVD shoot up in Detroit and they had like this uh, oh jeez I can't remember the name of it uh, but it was like a circus theme thing where he was Pogo the Wonder Boy and there's all these different themes to it and they had a jazz band playing through the music right um, what okay. what do you think about these like you know, being involved in one of these these, these like kind of outside concepts to pro wrestling that kind of kind of spins it a little bit <laughs> not to offend any of the promoters other promoters I work for but honestly if we could take the old timey wrestling on the road, I would do it in a heartbeat. Oh yeah. I mean, I would quit everything else I did and just do that because it's so much fun. And it's so, the fans even get into it. The fans dress in old timey clothes. Um, they have, uh, cigar, cigar and cigarette girls going through the crowd with, uh, you know, candy and gum cigars and cigarettes. I mean, the whole experience, it, it, it just takes your mind off of, the politics and, the, and everything else that's involved with indie wrestling and professional wrestling period. And you just have fun with it. And that, and that's what we all got in this business too, is to have fun with it. And at old timey wrestling, Mary Fontaine, if you're listening to this, God bless you, sir, because that is the most fun I've ever had in a wrestling ring. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. I, I love it. And that's exactly what we're looking for. And I love that, you know, uh, uh, you know, some people get down on Chikara, but I think it's, it's cool because it's fun and creative a lot of times. Right. Um, I actually had the opportunity to work with Chikara oh. a couple of times, and it's those niche audiences that's going to keep professional wrestling going because mm-hmm. um, so many people are just fed up with the professional wrestling mainstream product. And that's where like IWC and AIW and all these other independents are gaining ground on WWE and the bigger companies is because, for one, they listen to their fans. They listen to what the fans want. Um, you know, I, I sit back there at the table with Chuck Roberts, with Justin Plummer, with uh, John Thorne and Chandler Biggins, and we all gauge, we all have, we all see what everybody's seeing. See, that's that's one thing I've always said as the ring announcer is I don't get to take pee breaks. I have to sit through every match, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Mm-hmm. I don't get to take breaks. I have to watch everything that's going on out there. So I have a pretty good idea of what the the audience likes, what they don't like, what they're indifferent to, what they don't want to see, what they do want to see. And if these niche audiences like the Chikara, like the old timey, like Absolute Intense Wrestling, IWC, all these, every promotion has something that's bringing these fans to the arena. If they didn't, ha- if they weren't supplying what the fans wanted to see, nobody would come. So there's obviously a market for these fun promotions like the old timey, like Chikara, and all these other ones um, that they're not getting elsewhere. And, you know, it, it always used to be a thing with Vince McMahon that comedy won't sell tickets. Well, Obviously, comedy will sell tickets, or else these promotions wouldn't exist. If that makes sense to you, I don't know. They have a lot of bad com- comedy on Monday nights for uh, having uh, that policy. Right, exactly. <laughs> and if you know, even though I, I feel the vaudevillians are, are ripping off Marion Fontaine completely, 
I hope they do get to the main station and they show everybody, you know, it doesn't have to be a guy in black tights and black knee pads every mm-hmm. match. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's got to be, there's got to be some difference to everything out there. I mean, let's face it. There's only so many moves in the wrestling business. And despite what everybody tries to do, moves are going to get repeated in a wrestling match, yeah. match after match after match. So you got to have something for, you know, that differentiates and makes you stand out and like can get a different emotion from people because, you know, 90% of a match typically is punch, kick, punch, kick, clothesline, drop down, back body drop, blah, blah, blah. You know, if there's something that can bring out that emotion, somebody, you know, what, what I like, you might hate, but there's always that common ground that everybody likes to have fun. So why not have fun instead of, you know, everything's got to be super serious or super storyline driven. No, just we're going, the whole purpose and why they change it to sports entertainment is because people want to be entertained. So if that's going to be our approach nowadays, entertain me. All right. I, I don't need to be slapped in the face with realism all the time. I want to have fun and be entertained. So do it. That's, that, that's as simple as I can make it. Just entertain me. Keep me happy. Awesome. So what is entertaining? What's keeping you happy these days? What are you watching in, uh, in the world of pro wrestling? Um, I, I, I guess because, and a lot of people hate the term Mark, but I will be the first one to admit I'm a Mark and Ricky Shane page. If anybody knows who Ricky Shane page is, <laughs> loves to call me a Mark all the time. I don't care if we didn't have March, we wouldn't have a business. So bite me, Ricky Shane page. Love you. Hey, you know, um, on, on that, I really think that shouldn't the wrestlers be the biggest marks in the business because they got into it? Right, exactly. And, you know, um, so I watch everything. I, I love watching, um, and I always mess this up, New Japan, All Japan, whatever it is on um, Access, I mm, watch that yes. every Friday. Um, I, I watch Total Divas, even though it's terrible. I watch it. <laughs> I watch Raw. I watch SmackDown. I'm really bummed out because I don't get Destination American anymore, so I can't watch Impact anymore. But Hmm. you go in my basement, it is nothing but wrestling stuff. I have videos and VHS. I'll never give up my VCR. So I still have my VHSs from years and years and years ago. I love the old Smoky Mountain stuff, USWA. I love anything. If it's wrestling, I'll watch it. I don't care how bad it is, good it is, whatever, I'll watch it. So I will watch anything, but... um, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't really have a favorite anymore. I mean, I, I was a huge CM Punk mark uh, because I got to meet him through JT Lightning many, many years ago. So I knew him before anybody else did. So I, I was kind of bummed when he left. So I guess and Daniel Bryan would be who I really appreciate watching now because I did get to ring announce for him. But it's just, I don't have like a favorite. It's just, I like wrestling, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome, and keeping an ear to it too, because I've, I've I've talked with people like, especially in the indies, they don't know what's going on, you know, maybe don't know right. about other indies, no, don't aren't keeping up with like what WWE is doing. You kind of need to be if you're, especially if you're a promoter or something. Um, right, exactly. It's like I, I hate when people say, "Oh, I don't watch that." Yeah, like why? Yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> it, that, 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 that's the biggest cop out and dumbest thing I've ever heard is when somebody talks, like, "Oh, I don't watch WWE." Yeah, why? <laughs> they're, they're the the industry leader for a reason. Why don't why wouldn't you watch that? At it's least like, even even for a critique and see what does it take to get there. If that's if that's everybody's goal, you know. Uh, supposedly, and, and, I know it's not everybody's goal, but right. And then that yeah, that's the usual. Fall. Well, I don't ever want to be in, in WWE. Really, you don't want to be able to support your family <laughs> for years to come. That that's okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I always, I always look at like we've had, you know, I mean, look at the people in there, like even like uh, Sarah Del Rey, you know, who's, I, I think it's probably been through your neck of the woods as well. Um, uh, you know, is a trainer, and it's like, okay, yeah, she's not on Raw, but good for her. She's getting a paycheck. You know what I mean? Even exactly. as a trainer in Orlando, good for her. And look at you watch the NXT program. What, what is she influencing? You know, and we're getting this tremendous thing there, and she has to have a hand in that. Exactly, and it, you know. Trust me, I would love to not have to wake up tomorrow morning at 4.30 in the morning mm-hmm. to go work in a factory all day. Um, if somebody floated a contract, I don't care who it was with, if I didn't have to go in 
get up at 4.30 in the morning to do my job, mm-hmm. you know, my, my shoot job, as everybody likes to call it, mm-hmm. trust me, I would jump at the chance just like anybody else would. So, yes, I watched the WWE product. Is it as good as it used to be? I don't know. Can we really say, have we all become jaded to where, you know, we all grew up in the Attitude Era and everybody likes to say the Attitude Era was the greatest thing ever? Yeah, looking back, but are we looking at, looking back on it with, you know, rose-colored glasses? You know, there was a lot of stuff that was bad mm-hmm. back in 98, but mm-hmm. now we look back on it, oh, it's the greatest thing ever. No, it, it, it was some, there was a lot of bad stuff. And anybody that says no, all I got to say is Mark Henry in the hand. That's it. <laughs> We're actually going through, uh, well, when I'm going through the WrestleManias, I'm getting to that era, and I'm getting like that mixed bag of, hmm, this is what we did at WrestleMania, you know? And, right. uh, and we also have uh, my co host actually on this show uh, is, how uh, was he, 21. So he didn't get to really experience the Attitude Era, and he's going back. And he's like, I don't understand what all you guys are crazy about. <laughs> so, exactly. It and it's not. And it, was the, it, was. it was the time, it was the 90s, it was a vibe, right? And uh, you just can't right. go back back and mimic that you know like i'm sure hulk hogan in the 80s looks absolutely ridiculous to anybody else but me that was running around doing hulk hogan moves to the end of every match that he won you know when i was you know seven you know right so um awesome I, so, okay last question here and we'll let you go here um but uh tell me what's the best thing and the worst thing about working with indie wrestling uh so far um let me, the best thing right now, and, you know, I, I've kind of told a lot of people that uh, June, I'm, I'm hanging it up. Um, my wife is pregnant, so it's time to, I guess, grow up and be, uh, join the real world again, I guess. Uh, it's been an amazing <laughs> ride, but the best part is, is everything that I'm going to be able to look back on and say, okay, I knew that guy before he was famous. Yeah. Um, you know, I got to do all this been to so many different cities and states and met so many different interesting people that the best part for me hasn't happened yet because I, I'm not able to sit down and really look back and like look at all the stuff that I got to do. Mm-hmm. But then again, the worst part is is all the stuff that you know I'm missing out on. Um, and th- th- for anyone that is seriously looking to get involved with indie wrestling or pro wrestling in general, you are going to sacrifice so very much if you want to even obtain it. And I'm not even trying to act like a superstar here because there, I am on no, no level a superstar or attempt to, to act like I am one, but you know, family time doesn't exist when you want to be in indie wrestling or pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. Um, you miss birthdays, you miss anniversaries. Um, if you get to that that main level, you miss even so much more because you're always on the road. If you don't like to live out of the back of a car or a suitcase or always be on the road, do not get in this business because that is the absolute worst. It's, it's a whole lot of hurry up and wait because you're hurrying to get to a show. You're sitting. you you got to be there a couple hours before the show starts, so you're sitting there and you're waiting You do the show, you're waiting to get paid, you get back in the car, you drive back home. So it's a whole lot of hurry up and wait. So unless if you don't have the desire to basically shut off your personal life and do this, don't get involved because you are going to get chewed up and spit out by this business before you even realize it. And that's what happens to a lot of guys. They they get in in the business with all guns blazing and and they realize, oh, it kind of sucks to drive eight hours for, you know, 20, 40 bucks, get back in the car and drive back home for eight hours. And you're miserable the whole rest of the week at work trying to make ends meet just so you can go back out and do it again. If you, if that doesn't sound like life for you, don't even attempt this because that's what life is. Point blank. And I'm sure you can attest to that. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Certainly. Pedro DeLuca. He's not on social media. But you can find him at the no. shows. <laughs> <laughs> no, no social media at all. I got enough problems in my life. I don't need all that garbage too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, he's uh, you know still working at least for the time being at an international wrestling cartel in the Pittsburgh area. Actually, going to be up in Meadville next on April 11th. I think that date is with uh, yep. well, hey, you're going to be a uh, Ric Flair, Kevin Nash, all kinds of people are on that show. If you would have told you know ten year old, twelve year old me that one day you're going to do a show with Ric Flair. I would have never believed you in a hundred years, but <laughs> living the dream, man, living the dream. 
And of course, Vicious Outcast Wrestling uh, at viciousoutcastwrestling.com. I think they're coming up in a couple weeks here as well. West Virginia show coming up, right? Yes, I, April April 4th and then the Friday, right? Uh, the Friday the 10th, they have a show also. Or, yes. Mm-hmm. And, and of then course, absolute, absolute Intense Wrestling this uh, Friday the 20th, Gauntlet for the Gold, one of my absolute favorite shows. Uh, it's a 30-man over-the-top rope gauntlet style battle royal. Nice. It's going to be a lot of good stuff coming up. Love AI Wrestling up there. Uh, we, we talk about them a lot. They, they, they're, they're a newsmaker. <laughs> they, know, they know how to get themselves out there. Um, be That's it, right. Be That's it through. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Be it through awesome talent or controversy or names or whatever. Um, but they're getting it done up there. And I, and I love seeing what's coming out of there all the time. We haven't talked to uh, people out there for a while. We, we need to change that definitely in the near, near future. You, you need to come up this Friday. So just come on down. <laughs> we'll get you in there. Just hang out, have fun. Come on down. Just come on. Just come on. Come on up to Cleveland. <laughs> yeah, it's just a three-hour drive. Come on. I'm thinking about. It. I'm on. looking at the next old wrestling show. It's up in Lakewood. I'm. I don't know. I might have to take a weekend. Um, oh, I really love that idea. Up, man. That thing's we'll like take it's... you to melt. You know, we'll, we'll give you the, the superstar treatment out there. Oh yeah. Take you to melt. <laughs> get you the big old che- uh, grilled cheese. Mm. You'll never want to leave. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Pedro DeLuca, thank you for joining us. And with that, we're going to go back to the future and uh, Tuesday night and uh, talk about some more indie wrestling. Yes! Thank you, Pedro, as we time more back to now here on Tuesday night. Uh, tremendous, fun, fun interview with him. Eamon, indie wrestling. Sure. Indie wrestling, indie wrestling. I say, if I say it more, I'll know what we're talking about. Is it uh, indie wrestling? It's indie wrestling. Um, but uh, how was everything in the world of indie wrestling for you? Uh, you got Inspire Pro Wrestling going on down there. Yeah, we actually got a show uh, coming up this weekend, uh, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, uh, it's going to be a real trying uh, test for us, I think. Not not trying. I think trying is a little overstatement. Uh, we're actually running, uh, you know, obviously Austin, Texas, around this time of year, uh, has a little big thing that goes on in this town called South by Southwest. I'm hearing about it. Uh, yes, um, and it's a very hectic time for this city. Um, and, and our event's going to be on the tail end uh, this Sunday, uh, on the, the 22nd. Uh, we're hoping uh, uh, this will be this will be an interesting test for us, I think. Uh, for both from the fact of running like at the near the end of South by Southwest, seeing how that will work, because not a lot of other companies or, or any other you know people try to run during that time, because uh, it's just you know you know it's hectic and 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 sometimes people well, get burnt out and right and it's, right. You know, well, let's explain a little bit for those that don't know what exactly South by Southwest is. Now it's a big. Now I know it from the tech side of things. It seems um, mm-hmm. that a lot of lot of apps like meerkats kind of the big thing this year um i've been using it actually streaming right now i got four people watching and my bottles in front of my face and are catching <laughs> one end of the conversation you know for instance uh but you know stuff like that but it's built music and arts and i think they have movies down there i, yeah. I know a, uh one of the founders of podcamp pittsburgh uh is down there i think for the movie part of it and, and listen to a lot of creators uh talk about stuff um but there's also a lot of parties and now i've never witnessed this i imagine you've been kind of in the area when this has gone down mm-hmm. it, it, it sounds like it really kind of takes over the city it, it really does uh, actually uh, a friend of the indie mayhem show and, and one of the owners of inspire pro uh, max Meehan also uh, uh uh runs a uh, beer land which is a local bar downtown on uh, uh downtown austin and so he feels the brunt of it like you know every year it is pretty insane the 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 scene especially downtown um luckily i think i think the benefit is we are kind of a bit off bit off of downtown where you know we're still sort of on the major highway but it's you know it's a little ways off hopefully that'll help uh because the other big thing is if you live in austin one of the biggest things you'll hear is that the traffic is terrible during this time Mm -hmm. it is one of the worst worst periods to be outside you know in austin texas because it's hard to get anywhere um and and that's very true um but yeah, music, films, uh, lots of parties, lots of you know, you know the bar the bar scene is very you know uh, uh, lively down there uh, during this time of year. Um, but but it's going to be very interesting for us for that fact. Also from the fact that I I, I actually really think this is a, one of our more solid cards like up and down the line. And and there's not a lot of there's not a lot of 
uh, like fly-in talent or, or, or special like big names from like out of the state or, or anything like that, um, uh, which is, I think, hopefully a testament to the fact that you know our 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 roster here in Texas can can stand up to that to some of our past shows that have a lot of talent that we fly in and stuff like that, which is cool. Um, there's a lot of really cool stuff on this show. Uh, the main event uh, is definitely. Uh, going to be one uh, for the makings with uh, Andy Dalton from the Indy Mayhem show defending his Inspire Pro Championship against centerfold Matthew Palmer in a street fight. Uh, the stipulation being that if Matthew Palmer does not win the Inspire Pro Championship, he must leave Inspire Pro Wrestling for good. Uh, these two have been at each other since August. It's gotten really heated, um, and, and it's going to be a very intense matchup to say the least. Uh, and, and it should be really fun. Also, uh, Ray Rowe uh, taking on Franco D'Angelo in, in a battle of the bionic uh, uh, competitors. Both of these two have very similar stories in, in coming back from, uh, from very uh, serious injuries, uh, both very uh, uh, strong competitors, and, and I think that's a, a real dream match that we're getting to put on. Uh, and there's a lot of fun stuff all up and down the card, uh, and I'm really excited for this show. I think it's, it's going to be a real fun one. Uh, and like I said, I hope the um, I, I think for, I think we'll do pretty well. I'm hoping, you know, the whole like the whole South by Southwest atmosphere doesn't hamper it at all. Um, but uh, for uh, tickets and more information, you can go to InspireProWrestling.com, uh, and uh, hopefully we can see you there in Austin if you're uh, in the area. Awesome, awesome, and uh, yeah, and you guys are doing some great stuff down there as usual. So um, good, good to see. Good to see. Um, so nothing's blowing up in the end <laughs> in the wrestling yeah. this past week, right? Um, I know we've been touching. No, on that. I can think of that. No one's been, you know, you know. There's been no controversy as of late, which is nice. I, I, I guess that's amazing. Actually, can we talk about? Uh, you know, you know, it's not indie wrestling, but there's a video that I saw today, and I hope that you got a chance to sit down and watch this a little bit too. The uh, wrestling isn't wrestling. It is, yeah. yeah. I, I, I've watched it multiple times because I can't. Multiple stop times. It. <laughs> it, it's it's a very it's a very well done video, uh, and it, yeah, it doesn't. There's there's some indie wrestlers that are in it. Right, uh, right. Yeah. The but, likes of uh, Cole Cabana, Chris Hero, uh, um, Christopher Daniels, and Frankie Kazarian were a part of it, uh, and and some major celebrities too as well. So that's right. Uh, I know uh, David Arquette pops up in this thing, um, and uh, it's Seth Green. For instance, mm-hmm. and, that one guy, that one guy from Glee, I can't remember his name. One guy from Glee, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know who we're talking about. Uh, but, but there's so many people, and they go so fast on this. Um, you know, it, it, it is kind of all over the place. Um, but yeah, I, I got past this by our friend of the show, Zach Gowan, and it's really for those who don't know. It, it, if you've ever seen the show Drunk History, it really comes off like that. Yeah. It is 24 minutes long. <laughs> it is um, a retelling of the storyline of Triple H since the beginning, mostly with girls playing the parts of him, Shawn Michaels, and the like. Um, but there, like I said, there's a lot of interaction. There's a lot of really interesting crypt. Actually, I believe that's Joey Ryan in that show. Joey shot Ryan there. and uh, John Morrison as well, or Johnny Mundo. Oh, it is Johnny watch, Mundo. Okay. You okay. watch uh, Lucha Underground. But, I mean, this was a production. Somebody put a lot of stuff into this thing, right? Um, yeah. To, to do as much as they did, and 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 it was uh, there's Shawn Michaels with the Playgirl, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was such a great representation. And if you don't understand why people like wrestling, or you kind of need a reminder why you like wrestling, there was a pretty good you know they say we're not here to watch wrestling, we're here for the storyline and to watch people grow. And taking something like a Triple H and talk about like how that character has grown and his motivations over the years mm-hmm. to what he is now is just tremendous. And it's just a you know it's a retelling and it's it's uh it's really a love letter to pro wrestling in general. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, would, I, would, I would encourage anyone who hasn't watched it to definitely uh, seek it out because it, it's it, it, even though it is like twenty minutes long, it's very like it keeps you. It's very, you know, it, it's um, it's something you kind of can't take take your eyes off of really. Right, right. And I know it looks like a really bad music video in the shots that I'm showing right here. <laughs> but but this trust is me, in context, this makes sense. 
it just yeah. completely uh very very talented individuals and doing something uh independent and and getting a lot of traction for it too um i think they dropped the i think they jumped about a hundred thousand since i looked at it earlier today um, yeah it really did blow up uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's being shared everywhere so it's it's really cool to see yeah. Uh, so please go check that. I say again, kind of that calling card letter to wrestling. <laughs> just, I'm in the Undertaker stuff right now. <laughs> My favorite section because that section is entirely accurate. It is it entirely accurate. It, it completely is. Um, and my, 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 I, I like the part where they're uh, describing Ric Flair and why he's awesome. And then he pulls <laughs> back and says, okay. I realize because it's oh I have the quote in the I have the quote over on on, on <laughs> so I'm basically saying that sometimes when you describe something in wrestling it doesn't sound as awesome as it, as you make it seem but it's wrestling. still awesome it's Ric Flair <laughs> 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 so I that was kind of the side thing the kind of a a you know again kind of a calling card to wrestling and kind of why we are into it and I thought that was really uh, I think it was really pointed to the conversations we've had including the one that we just had with Pedro about what we're watching what we're doing you know what paying attention to stuff going on there and why we're fans in, in, mm-hmm. in the long run well uh with that let's uh play a little bit of indie roulette shall we oh brother <laughs> as you know we get this no no that's not as deadly as, as, as no sure. no i don't know it depends on what kind of show you end up at uh i, I do want to plug one show that i do know about okay that, uh, that, uh, i think we should plug uh since we also had Pedro on uh, it's, it's important to talk that aiw has an event coming up this friday as he, uh, he as he as he plugged before yes Yep, the uh, Gauntlet for the Gold. Uh, it looks like a really good card. They have their Gauntlet for the Gold uh, 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 match that will determine uh, who gets a shot at the uh, AIW title. Um, uh, Ray Rose taking on Johnny Gargano, which I think nice. will be a phenomenal contest. Mm-hmm. Um, Ricky Shane Page versus Two Cold Scorpio. Uh, wow. Should be very fun. Wow. Yeah, definitely. Definitely AIW's want to bring in some different uh, uh, uh talents which is really kind of cool to see uh also josh alexander is defending his aiw title against dick justice uh, i don't get to say this enough um dick justice because there's an awesome that, name that's true uh if you've never seen super cop dick justice before oh, um please search out some dick justice uh, i we used to do a segment <laughs> earlier in the podcast where we were like promoting indie wrestler uh this was before he kind of broke out uh, Super Cop Dick Justice could be one of my favorite wrestlers. Am there. I am I finding the right guy here? Is is, is this the fellow? That is Super Cop Dick Justice. Oh uh, no! <laughs> it is pretty. It's pretty great to be honest. Uh, uh, he he's done some really cool stuff. Oh, he's in a uh, blindfold he, match with Gregory Iron. Uh, yes, because uh, I believe Gregory Iron uh, burned his, one of his eyes with a cigar. Uh, you know, AIW. Or, that's you know, amazing. In, uh, that's in uh, AAW. Excuse me. Um, if you just just YouTube Super Cop Dick Justice and and you'll find some really funny, really uh, entertaining stuff. Uh, most definitely. Wow, this is this looks incredible just from the pictures and stills that I'm getting off of this. Uh, Super Cop Justice. If you want to find him on Twitter, I'm gonna follow this guy because <laughs> holy <laughs> crap, is gonna be amazing. Um, and uh, the one that the one that I kind of spotted here. Hold on, I'm, I, I seriously I'm following this guy from all my accounts. <laughs> <laughs> so it takes a moment. Uh, I'll, I'll send you some YouTube clips. So you'll you'll enjoy it. And I'll say oh, also I, I couldn't. I don't think I could snag it there during that interview with uh, Pedro here. But old day wrestling, just old with an e on it. Wrestling dot com, and you'll find information on what we we're talking about there. Uh, I might have to make it up there, to Lakewood, Ohio. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, definitely. They said they. There's some really uh, entertaining talents on there, and it's a, mm-hmm. such a cool, different concept. So much fun! I think uh, that's Pedro getting choked in the front on that that cover. So, <laughs> um, and also, uh, Russia. Let's say we got uh, Nate Stein uh, uh, emails out this list of just every indie in America. If you get yourself on that list, it's just tremendous. Just go through, and I'm like, how? I didn't even know these were things. Um, but I found a group called Underground Empire Wrestling. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, if you're interested, and like I said, I want ones that that have a at least a representation online for the most part. So if you mm-hmm. go to uh, uewwrestling.com, which I hate when they put the W in and then they also put wrestling. Yeah, that's that's like, always it's like, that's always hard. Ah! IWCWrestling.com. At least it's in the middle, I guess. So now it's like U 
E wrestling wrestling. I'm sorry, a little pet peeve on, on, on <laughs> setup there. But anyways, um, they have. Oh, that's the wrong one. I don't know where it's at. There you are. Uh, but they have a there video is. show up, so you can check it out. Looks like they do pretty decent with the production, uh, yeah, so you can nice. actually uh, uh, experience these guys a little bit. Uh, they have a show coming up, if I remember where it is. Passage to Pain. Jesus. Saturday. Saturday, March 21st at 7 p.m. in East Los Angeles, California. Uh, down See, there. Wait, wait. Sorg's always talking. No, I don't know where Cal... There's plenty of wrestling in California. In L.A., five hours away from where I was looking. Uh, welcome, to, welcome to Texas. <laughs> welcome to... <laughs> yeah, but... Well, as well. Me, I know that, and that's... Uh, that's actually a group I've never heard of, so it's cool to see that there's more, like, groups out there. Right, you know what right, I mean? right. Like, and, and I, I can name, like, three, you know. If I'm mistaken, I believe our friend Alex Cars is not too far away, so I'm curious to see if he... Uh... Uh, may have heard of this uh, as well, or may be checking it out. Maybe it's one he can check out instead of a uh, PWR Pro Wrestling Gorilla. Wait, PWR is that <laughs> PWG Pro Wrestling Rampage is an eerie PA. There's a difference. They use the R because of the two R's in Gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> Gorilla. We'll just go with that. Uh, go check it out. UEWWrestling.com. And I said they have a lot of stuff going on there. Ah, oh, they got bloody stuff. Ah, oh, no. Bloody. <laughs> so that's all really I got the indie wrestling fit to talk about this week, Eamon. And that, then that's all I can uh, 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 think of that, that is happening in the indie wrestling world. I learned, you know what? Well. I had a good conversation with Pedro. We learned about Super Cop Dick Justice. Um, and there's bloody stuff happening in East LA. Um, yeah. that's, your, that's what I learned from indie wrestling this week. <laughs> we covered the gamut. We covered the gamut of independent wrestling. Tremendous. Of course, of course. Please uh, check out everything at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Uh, follow us uh, at, on Twitter at Mayhem Show and so my other so many other places. And of course, uh, you can check out wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Uh, subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show and everything else. And, uh, and and please join us here uh, next week and let us know uh, what you're into at goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow dot com or four one two two zero six WMS zero and please support some indie wrestling. Bill is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out wrestlingmayhemshow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.